Hi everybody, welcome to Evening TV. So today I wanted to talk to you about giving people the benefit of the doubt. This was always a way that I had lived, to give people the benefit of the doubt, to assume the best until they proved, until they showed you that there was some reason not to. And, and part of this too was that I really didn't want to be a negative person. I didn't want neg to let negativity and cynicism seep in. If that was just a way I didn't want to live, that, that was a negative way to be. And the interesting thing was too, is that I think that I was naturally drawn to men who weren't like that. In fact, this is how I ended up hooking up with numerous abusers, one after the other. The three, the three in a row that took place over the course of about 16 years were men that I was largely attracted to because I felt like they were savvy. I felt like they were, that they were street savvy, that they could you know, they were the kind of guys that would go in and they would put their, they, they'd want to sit with their back against the wall and be able to see the whole uh, restaurant or whatever. But they were just, they were always really going to be aware of the, of what was going on and that made me feel like they could keep me safe. The thoughts were kind of in the right place because I had an awareness about myself, I had an awareness about the kind of person that I was and not only was but wanted to be. I wanted to be able to be a person who could basically hold on to my sweetness and my innocent, uh, he could take care of me and he was that way. It's partly why I was attracted to men who had, the, who I thought had been brought up in a, with a rougher background than me. That I, I think I was drawn to men that I thought had a rougher background than me because that would give them this street savviness. And I didn't want to have to be the one who was in the protector mode because I didn't think that I was particularly good at it. and. I didn't. I just didn't want to have to be that person. I wanted someone else protecting me. Well, this really backfired, of course, because while it's true no one else harmed me, they harmed me. I mean, the person who I had put in the role of being the one who was going to look after me turned out to be the abuser. And on the occasion when I when I was married to um, to, to the one that would last the longest, of course, when he came in as saying you know, he would always have my back, he would always be on my side because I came right off the bat telling him about about my family right from the very start. You know, so I let him right in. I made myself really, really vulnerable, letting myself letting you know, talking about what my family was like, what I was going through with my family right from the very beginning. But he he wasn't protective of me with my family, which was the which was his very first upfront promise to me was that he would be. In fact he used them to to further his abuse to abuse me. So what I wanna say is if that was ever appropriate in my lifetime, it's not anymore. It's definitely not anymore. I don't think that that's appropriate because I've been burned by this now in little ways too, by assuming the best of people and letting them show me otherwise. I think what we have to do instead is we have to take a different approach completely and we have to not think the worst of people. That's definitely not what we want to do and that would be negative. That would, you know, thinking the worst of people until they prove otherwise, that would be not a good approach. That would make, that would also be a self-fulfilling prophecy, I think, if you were walking around paranoid or, or, or expecting the worst of people. And I've seen people do that. I've seen people where they're expecting the worst of people and they actually drive people nuts. They make, they make, they make bad things happen because they think they're cheating or they're going to screw me over and they, they, they do make bad things happen. So you don't want to do either one. I think you want to be, you want to, you want to withhold any judgment. You want to enter into things and be careful what you're disclosing and disclose things as at a need, as need to know basis. Keep kind of a scorecard until you get comfortable with how people are. And if they do things that just don't feel right to you, have kind of them on a, on a, on a watch list, you know, in your mind. That, you know, I'm not completely comfortable with them. I'm watching them. For, I'm, gonna, I'm suspending judgment. I'm going to wait and see. I don't have enough to say. I don't want them around, but, but not completely comfortable. It's part of growing up. I hate to say it, you know. It really is. I, it's not just becoming paranoid or becoming negative or cynical. It is really just kind of growing up. It's realizing that a lot of things that have happened in my life, I didn't deserve for them to happen. They ha they were completely unfair. And But the reality of it is, is that not everybody plays by the same rules that I do. Not everybody does it the same way. And so, you know, do you have to cut yourself off from every single person? No, and that's not even realistic. You can't do it even if you wanted to. You really can't. You have to you, know, you have to get in there and play the game. That's the other thing. It is a game, and you are playing. You're playing so long as you're alive. The sooner that you kind of come to terms with that, the better. This is another thing I didn't want to do. I didn't think, oh, you know, I'm not a game player. I don't want to play a game. It's, you're in a game, and you are playing. <laughs> 
And so the sooner that you get smart about the fact that not everybody is following the same rules you're following, kind of coming to this after, you know, thinking about how many times in little ways and in big ways, I've been really screwed over by people. It wasn't just like the big bad husband thing that happened. People that have hired to do work for me or things like that where I've really, I've had, it seems like I've had more than my fair share of people taking advantage and, and, and that people just don't necessarily have the same, the same code of ethics that I do or that you do. You're not going to change the world. And so it's your responsibility to protect yourself and to not make yourself vulnerable to that and to not risk more than you can afford to lose. You avoid wanting to know because it just doesn't, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like that's not the world I want to live in. But I really believe that we want to know the truth and we feel better once we're dealing with the truth. And so once I just put it out there, once I just say, people aren't always as good a people as I would hope they would be. They're not as good a people as as I would assume they were. And, you know, I've had this brutal, brutal, re, you know, re reckoning having to come down all the way from my, my own parents. You know, my own parents weren't as good a people as I want, as I believed they were. You know, so so once, basically once you come to terms with that, it's all basically downhill from there. Everyone got easier after that. But more times than not, I have in my life been surprised. Been surprised when people aren't as good as I expect them to be. And, you know, I don't want that to happen anymore. I don't want that to happen anymore. And I have to be more careful and discerning because I have the experience now of, of trying to put... The, Having my man be the discerning one and I can be the trusting, happy-go-lucky one, that didn't work out so well. That didn't work out so well because what's to stop him from being the one that takes advantage of me? And sure enough, he did. It's time to basically grow up and and accept that it can kind of be a harsh world. It can kind of be screwed up, and a lot of people aren't aren't that great. They're not that they're not that cool after all. And you got to look out for yourself. And it's better to just be smart about it and know know that and just embrace reality as I always say embrace reality for what it is and you're not surprised all the time and disappointed all the time because they're really disappointing moments really disappointing moments usually more than the loss they hurt feelings that someone just wasn't as good as as you thought they were and that's you know those are disappointing moments so better just maybe set it up a little differently you know and that's so that's what I'm going to try and do so as far as giving the benefit of the doubt I say if that was ever, if that was ever the way to be, it's not anymore. That's not the times we're living in. So it's not to make any judgment. Be neutral and let them prove who they are to you. And when a person tells you who they are, listen, believe them. When they tell you who they are, believe them. Don't try and assume that they're better than you think they are. Better, you know, that they are like you. Really, really check yourself and and let people. When people tell you who they are, believe them. And they tell you in their actions and not in their words. Although they will also tell them their stuff in their words too. So, all right. Thanks a lot, you guys. I will talk with you soon. Bye-bye.